Hello, my friends. Nice to see you. Let's see. All right. How's everybody doing? I wanted to follow up. That was a fantastic, fantastic video. Um, cleansing that was just played. And I wanted to say, like, okay, well, let's get into something a little bit intense. So, over the years of my practice, I've done a lot of client work in necromancy. Of that, entering into the other world, going and transferring my consciousness into the space between worlds, right? Um, and I use death in order to do that. So, human skull. Now, the thing about working with human bones is that they do need to be cleansed, and that cleansing technique with the, the crystals in the singing bowl is fucking phenomenal. I'm gonna have to use that next time. But opening the skull up and being able to stick your spell totem inside it. What's up, man? Nice to see you. So, cultivating your, your spells inside what was formerly a person. Um, I got the skull from doing client work. My client actually sourced it from, I believe it was the bone room, or one of the osteological supply houses. Um, so this was actually paid for by a client so that I could do the spell casting for him to make the, the arrangements and things from back in the day. So the use of the human skull in this case is something that isn't for being an edgy magician. This is something that you're doing because you're connecting a spell to a person or you're pulling souls into the totem that you're making so that you can provide a better response out of the totem itself. Now, to take that a little bit further, because I'm, you know, kind of fun, is I've made a crown out of human ribs. So, where the crown of ribs connect to the other world and project your consciousness into the mind of the dead, in this case, using an actual skull as that intermediary. Now allowing the flow through back and forth, back and forth from the, the dead and the, the world of the living becomes uh, very dangerous if you don't have a period of separation, if you don't have a means to sever that connection. And so that's why creating a ritual environment such as your array grids or your gate conjurations and things like that, so that way when you're in that space, when you wear the crown of the dead or when you're working with a skull, you've got a gateway through which you can pass your soul through and a summoning array which you can pull things out of. By having those two differentials in your magic, you're able to control the flow. So you have the gate that you move from this world into and the summoning that pulls from there to here. So that way in your neutral space or in your ritual area, you've got the means to basically pull a singularity together so that way your manifestation occurs. So when you're done with that, you're able to know without a shadow of a doubt <clears throat> that your spells are in fact manifesting because you've pulled every potential in you've pulled from the dead you've pulled from the living you've pulled from the environmental with the elemental natures of the, the totem that you stuff inside the skull in the first place so by doing that it lets you connect more deeply to your ingredients or more deeply to the anima of whatever it is that you're creating so you don't in fact raise up other souls or other people's dead or other other types of connective necromancy you're actually forging something entirely new because never before in that situation have you had the physical ingredient something that was human and your spell and your spirit in connection to it so that way you again create a new type of compression that's otherwise not possible to gain unless you are doing this kind of harder work so just be careful if you start fucking with human bones because you'll need to cleanse the bones using smoke or like the sound technique. I'm gonna have to, like I said, I'm gonna have to screw around with that one, see what I can do with it. But most of these I cleanse in smoke beforehand to separate off the energies of who was alive. But the fact that these were once living entities, they had time, they existed, you know. Um, you can get the bones, or at least I was able to get the ribs off of Amazon. So when I do client totems, I made um, a grid for one rib that was carved for the name of the man, one 
one for the name of the woman, and then one for the union of the unborn child, and inside of that I made a pouch, and I stuffed the pouch with all the spell ingredients. Then I did a mummification wrap to it with a bunch of herbs that come out of Egypt, and blessing it before the netger and things like that. So what wound up happening from that particular spell was, yes, the lady did get her, her the man she wanted. Yes, she did get pregnant. Yes, the baby was a boy. Like, all of the things were possible through that kind of totemic work. It's just that kind of a spell for somebody cost them a fuck ton of money because all the ingredients I didn't have. So they had to acquire the ingredients legally, ethically. And so when you're working with the dead in this kind of way, make sure that when you fuck with this stuff, it's for ethical reasons, you know? Downside is that there are people that will call up the dead or they will use things that they've dug up from cemeteries out of places like asylums or places of high trauma or battlefields and things like that. And when they do that and they put them into... It, in this case, it was an Nganga that a, a witch was using, um, which is African tribal magic. So she put her ingredients into the Nganga, and then she made it corrupt. She, she bound to it all the hate, all the horror, right? And then she was using the energies from the fragments of the dead kids with the hate and with the demons and with all the, with all the nasty shit. And she was using that as something to send out at friends of mine, now friends, then clients. And what wound up happening was my then clients came to me and they're like, can you help us? So yeah, I caught the entity. I sent it back. And when I say that they're all dead, I literally mean they're all dead. They, there, was a, there was a house fire. Um, she, her husband and her eldest died when there was the return of the magic that they had been sending out within 24 hours of that catch and release. Um, so please be very careful in this stuff, folks. This is, this shit is not a game when you work with the dead or when you start working with these compound kinds of creations. It's not about using your power or your energy or to be some edgy motherfucker. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Work with the spirits. Bring new spirits in. Bring new spirits to life if you have to. But you don't do it for edgy, horrible reasons. Right? You serve with your power and you give with what you can. You know, that's what we have to do. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed my little like rant on the dead and please use your dead responsibly. Yay necromancy. Okay. Bye for now.